organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on Daily Iowa TV, hear about the latest developments in the first degree murder trial of a teen accused of killing an Iowa City landlord. Plus, hear about how one Iowa City woman got charged with domestic abuse for the second time in just over two years. And in sports, Iowa basketball coach Fran McCaffrey recently landed his fifth recruit of the 2012-13 season. See what's in store for the future of Hawkeye basketball. That's all coming your way next. Daily Iowa TV starts now. Thanks for tuning into your Tuesday edition of Daily Iowan TV, your television news, sports, and weather source for the Daily Iowan. I'm Megan Grody. And I'm John Detka. Charles Thompson, who is accused of shooting an Iowa City landlord in 2009, was granted a mistrial today at the Johnson County Courthouse. Sixth District Judge Sean McPartland granted the mistrial after the prosecution played for the jury part of an interview between Thompson and an investigator that was supposed to be redacted. Thompson's defense attorney immediately called for a mistrial, which the judge granted. Now officials are unsure of the timing of a new trial or whether it will be held in Johnson County. Last year, nearly one-third of schools in Iowa were deemed subpar in math and reading scores. This is amongst a whirlwind of controversy surrounding George W. Bush's No Child Left Behind Act. However, President Barack Obama is now pushing for legislation that would allow states to apply for waivers that would free them from the restraints of No Child Left Behind. Officials in Kentucky, Florida, and Wisconsin have also expressed interest in applying for these waivers. The waiver would allow schools more discretion with money spending and will allow for the state to create its own system of accountability. Well, most educators say, give me accountability and make it a growth rate. Here you are, did you get better, and are you accelerating? But to say, here you are, here's the bar, hurry up and jump, it's not realistic. Governor Terry Branstad's administration plans to unveil its proposed education reform for, an, for Iowa on October 3rd. Check out tomorrow's edition of Daily Iowan for more in-depth look at this issue. Still to come on Daily Iowan TV, we take a look at an Iowa sports blog started by Hawkeye fans. And in sports, we look at the Iowa women's soccer team as they prepare for conference games against Michigan and Michigan State this weekend. But first, Daily Iowa TV's Christina Targos joins us in the studio for a quick look at your local weather forecast. Christina? Thanks, guys. It looks like we've got more moderate temperatures ahead as we make our transition into fall. Your morning walk to class might be a little chilly Wednesday as we will see temperatures in the low 50s. It should warm up by lunchtime though with a midday high of 68. In the evening it will cool down slightly with temperatures right around 65 degrees. In the extended forecast, Thursday looks to be about the warmest day of the week with a high of 72 degrees with clear skies and breezy. This weekend looks to be sunny but will again cool down a bit as temperatures dip into the low 60s. Those temperatures will hit the upper 60s again by Sunday and Monday. That's your check of the weather. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Christina. An Iowa City woman is facing second offense domestic abuse charges after an altercation with her boyfriend Monday night. 28-year-old Melissa Menarsic allegedly struck her boyfriend after he refused to have sex with her. Authorities say Menarsic smelled strongly of alcohol and had slurred speech. Her first domestic assault conviction in Iowa happened in 2009. HawkeyeBeat.com is a website dedicated solely, solely to hockey sports and was created by a man who simply loves UI athletics. Daily Iowa TV's Jeff Shane sat down with creator to find out about this new and innovative website. You know, my family, my girlfriend, my friends will tell you, you know, if, if I'm not watching Iowa on TV, I'm reading about them or I'm, you know, reading other stuff or putting something up on the website. Creator Joe Larson started HawkeyeBeat.com last February and uses social media websites like Twitter and Facebook to help get the word out. I'll go have dinner with my girlfriend or something, I'll check my phone and I'll have 15 new friend requests in the past, you know, half hour. It's just kind of, you know, that, that's kind of the stuff that's, that's cool to me. But. When the site started, it would see just a few hundred hits a day, but now it sees traffic of up to 4,000 views daily. The week after Iowa State, not a lot of people looked at it, and I don't think they wanted to, uh, just because they didn't want to read the coverage. Um, but then just to rebound the week, you know, last week after Pittsburgh, it, it kind of blew up. Because of how big Hawkeye Beat is getting, Larson brought on four students to help write and blog for the site. 
I actually don't get paid while working there, but I just do it because I love Hawkeye sports. I am a huge diehard Hawkeye football fan, and it's just been so much fun. I'm only one of two girls who works for the site, and I know a lot of um, blogs out there don't really, especially sports blogs, don't hire female writers, so that's been great and something that really sets Hawkeye Beat apart. As of now, HawkeyeBeat.com is a nonprofit site. However, Larson knows this is something that needs to change in the future, but he plans on continuing covering all Hawkeye sports for the fans. A lot of those people are where I'd get the instant messages or the Facebook messages or, you know, the direct message on Twitter saying, thank you for covering this. You know, thank you for having a place where I can go and be like, hey, I wonder how the Iowa baseball team today. I know that I can go to Hawkeye Beat to where some other websites might not have it. Larson, who has a full-time job, knows that eventually all this hard work will pay off. It's a lot of hard work and a lot of time and a lot of effort, but um, I know that someday at, at some point um, it'll be worth it. HawkeyeBeat.com doesn't just cover sports, but now also includes movie reviews, interactive chats, and even a tailgating guide. Larson knows this is something that sets HawkeyeBeat.com apart from other sports websites. Jeff Shane, Daily Iowan TV. To check out the site for yourself, just go to HawkeyeBeat.com. Iowa State University announced today Stephen Leith as their new president. According to the Iowa State Daily, Leith is currently the Vice President of Research at the University of North Carolina. Leith said it is important for Iowa State to work closely with Iowa's sister schools. And now Daily Iowa TV Sports, Kate Constable joins us at the desk. And Kate, with all the green on Saturday, I was having flashbacks to 2008, mm -hmm. but it wasn't for Sean Green this time, it was for another former Hawkeye. That's right, John. Kinnick Stadium seats are always filled with black and gold, but last weekend the black and gold turned green to show support for a former player. Daily Iowa TV's sports director, Jake Abrams, has more. While everyone goes to Kinnick Stadium for football, the game wasn't the only thing on everybody's mind. Former UI graduate and football safety Brett Greenwood collapsed during a workout three weeks ago at his former high school. He's been under intensive care and in an induced coma. Last Saturday, the community proved how much he meant to this town. Thousands of green shirts replaced the typical black and gold in the stands. The team even wore a green decal on the back of every helmet. And although his progress is slow, the overwhelming amount of green showed Greenwood their support. We're all praying for you and we love you. I just think it's awesome to show the support and love for him. I just hope that he's doing okay and that he, uh, his recovery goes well and he just gets better soon with a full recovery. So. Although there has not been an official update from University of Iowa Hospitals, former teammate and close friend to Greenwood Colin Sandemid tweeted last night, more positives on Brett. Saturday, which was the day the town turned green, he smiled and blinked his eyes. It's a start. Keep him in your prayers. Uh, in some ways, I guess Brett represents our team. You know, he's making progress slowly right now. Uh, but I'd also say if our team will, uh, uh, you know, display the determination and the hard mindedness that uh, Brett has, uh, you know, we're going to be okay, and I'm, I'm really confident he'll be okay, but it's, it's probably going to take some time. Jake Abrams, Daily Iowan TV. The Iowa women's soccer team is unbeaten with a 9-0-2 record so far this season. And unlike previous seasons, the Hawkeyes have started strong in their Big Ten play. Daily Iowan TV sports' Yovana Simic tells us the reason behind Iowa's strong conference start. The Iowa women's soccer team is off to its best start in school history, and unlike their past conference struggles, the Hawkeyes are already 1-0-2 in Big Ten play. The reason for this improvement is because the women are focusing on their conference play one game at a time. This last weekend we had a win and a tie, so now we're kind of putting those in the past and just kind of focusing on the games that we have coming up. The last time the women's soccer team did well in conference play was in 2000. And although Big Ten play recently began, Coach Rainey believes that the team still has a lot to work on if they want to keep this record going. We have to really do a good job of eliminating scoring chances for opposing teams. So not making mistakes in our half of the field that people can capitalize. The Big Ten is known to be an extremely tough conference, and a lot of preparation goes into making sure these errors don't occur on the field. Now according to Coach Rainey, the key to success the team has had this season is due to their hard work and practice. I think our practices have been tremendous with all with, with everybody on the team, and that's helped us, um, that's, that's helped translate when we've played some of the Big Ten opponents. 
With their hard work and practice, the Iowa women's soccer team is confident that they will finish their season strong. Giovanna Simic, Daily Iowa and TV Sports. The Hawkeyes return to Big Ten play at home against Michigan this Friday at 7 p.m. The 2011 season hasn't even started, but Hawkeye basketball fans already have a lot to look forward to in 2012. Our Ian Martin looks at two players who recently announced they're coming to Carver in two years. Iowa basketball coach Fran McCaffrey is already looking past this season for more players to add to his fast-paced, fast-break offense, and he's discovered some gems. Last week, Adam Woodbury, a 7-foot center from Sioux City East, committed to play for the Hawkeyes, choosing Iowa over North Carolina, among many other schools. The 7-footer is 42nd overall in his class and is rated a 4-star prospect by many outlets, and as the video shows, he will fit very well into the Iowa offense. He can use his hook shot, he can use his fast break, and every now and then he'll even get a slam dunk. Wow, what will friend McCaffrey do about losing assist machine Bryce Cartwright next season? He's already got that figured out too. Another four-star prospect, Mike Giselle, who is also from Sioux City in Nebraska and has played AAU ball with Woodbury. Now McCaffrey isn't done recruiting, however, it appears he's well on his way to being able to replace his seniors this season. Ian Martin, Daily Iowa TV Sports. With those two in tow, McCaffrey now already has five commitments for the class of 2012. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm sure looking forward to sleeping in this weekend since the Hawks have a bye week for football. Now finally get a chance to watch some other teams <laughs> around the country. Thanks, Kate. And only with Daily Iowan TV can you get a sneak peek into Wednesday's page of the Daily Iowan. Read about what GOP presidential candidate Ron Paul said during a town hall meeting in Muscatine Tuesday afternoon. Plus, read about how the Iowa men's golf team finished at this week's Golf Week Conference Challenge. And before we go, here's one last look at tomorrow's forecast. Tomorrow will be slightly breezy with a high of 73. Thursday night will be mostly clear with a low of 45 degrees. And that's your latest edition of Daily Iowan TV. Be sure to check us out at the same time tomorrow or anytime online at dailyiowan.com. For Daily Iowan TV, thanks for watching and have a great night.